We're interested in understanding the analysis of uh, transport in groundwater. And when we're doing that, we're really going to be interested in several important processes. They're shown here in these individual terms. Uh, diffusion and dispersion are characterized by this term here. Uh, the dispersion is given here with a, a dispersivity uh, times a, a velocity. And this is from uh, molecular diffusion. The advection term where we have contaminants moving with the groundwater is shown here. This is chemical reactions. All of those contribute to a change in concentration with time. Now we can solve this equation by specifying boundary conditions and initial conditions. And there are a variety of ways of coming up with this kind of a uh, solution. One is to solve it analytically um, and another is a numerical solution. This is a, an example of an analytical solution here, uh, shown uh, here as a concentration as a function of time. You can see the time there and there. And this also gives us concentration as a, a function of distance, um, where distance is right there. So we can go out at a certain distance. We can fix the distance away from the, um, the source and we can measure concentration as a function of time or we can fix the time and vary x and we get a profile of the concentration as a function of distance. This is for the problem where we have a uh, we've got an x direction like so and the concentration as a function of distance is um, it basically has a boundary condition where we have uh, at x equals 0, the concentration is set equal to uh, C0 at time equals 0. And so we've got an initially the concentration is all 0 along x, then suddenly we increase it to C0 and we have concentration that looks like this uh, early on and it migrates down like that and migrates like this. Um, and it's, it's spreading out here uh, due to dispersion and moving downstream due to advection. So this is one way that we can analyze concentration as a function of time and space uh, by solving the equation that we saw on the previous page. Um, another possibility is to just uh, do the transport analysis with particle tracking. Uh, we've done that already in class using mod path and we would have a, a source of a, of a, a particle and then uh, we track the particle uh, through the flow field and we get a, a flow path like that um, and we can put in additional particles and we end up with something that, that looks like this. We can get the travel time along these paths. Um, so what this is doing really is giving us a way to uh, plot the trajectory uh, and the, the uh, transport due to advection. It's really ignoring dispersion. Um, and the way we do it, it also ignores reactions we could include retardation because that would slow the the travel but when we've been running that mod path so far we haven't really included any of these different uh, processes it's just advection with the water so as a result it tends to estimate the arrival of contaminants too early because these processes would slow it down and it also underestimates the the width of the plume so there are some shortcomings, but nevertheless, uh, using mod path is a good first step because it gives us an idea of where the contaminants would be going and, and how fast, kind of a, an upper bounds of how fast they might m move. Now, if we want to include those other processes, there are a couple of ways that we can do it. The GMS package that we've used earlier in the class has a numerical solver for the transport equation. Uh, it's called MT3D. And that's something that can give you a, a fairly detailed look at the transport processes um, with a, within a flow field that's generated by ModFlow. So that's something that some of you may be interested in trying out. Um, 
and it's uh, fairly straightforward to, to use and I would recommend looking at some of the online help if you're interested in doing that. For our class we're not going to go into that. Um, what I want to talk about instead is this analysis called Remclor. This is a uh, transport and remediation modeling code that was developed by Ron Falta who is in the environmental engineering and earth science department at Clemson. Uh, it's a code that is, as it turns out, it's an analytical solution uh, that's quite powerful and it allows you to analyze the development of a plume as well as processes associated with remediation. So this is a code that's available in the public domain. You can download it for free. This is used fairly commonly in the consulting world. And so this is something that uh, would be, I think, an important skill to have, an important thing to know about for those of you who are interested in pursuing careers in the environmental area. So Remclor basically allows you to characterize the source area of contaminants and the plume. And remember when we saw conceptual models of sites, we had these two conceptual models and we can break down these this fairly detailed scenario into these two areas, this source and the plume for an LNAPL and then the source area a little bit deeper here and the plume in a DNAPL case. And so from the Remclor perspective, there are these two regions. Uh, and what it includes is that uh, it's, it's assuming that clean water is flowing through the source area, dissolving contaminants, and that water then becomes uh, contaminated. And that supplies then uh, water with contaminants dissolved in it uh, to form this plume. The plume moves downstream and uh, it disperses. Uh, it also may degrade um, and a variety of processes may be happening uh, in the, the plume. The, the thing though that's going to be important to get right um, is to represent how the source releases mass uh, and creates this plume. So we can think of this conceptually as involving uh, the source is a region where there's some napal. These are little droplets or ganglia and the distribution of the napal, the size of the ganglia, the permeability of the source, um, the effects of matrix diffusion. All of these will affect how rapidly mass is transferred from the source into the water to then create a plume. So this is a fairly complicated process and the thing that's done in Remclor is to simplify this using an approach like this. Um, you assume that there is an initial mass in the plume and uh, that's M0 and then as that mass is removed by dissolution uh, the mass is reduced and so you're tracking the amount of mass that's in the plume, or the, the program is doing that for you. And then based on the amount of mass that's remaining in the source, uh, that allows you to estimate the concentration in the groundwater that is going into the plume. And so this plot here relates the concentration in the plume to the, the, the mass in the source area. And so the data that are shown on this graph are from some sites. And what you see is that there are, there are really two uh, paths. Initially, you start up here where the M over M0 is equal to 1. So you're starting out where the mass in the plume is equal to M0 and the concentration is equal to C0. So you always start here. And then as you remove some mass, the 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 it may follow a trajectory like that or like that and the details of what trajectory it follows will depend on some of those details that we discussed earlier about the source area. Um, if it goes along this kind of a trajectory then the concentration stays relatively constant as you remove mass from the source area um, and then it drops suddenly um, and then another pathway would be like this and here the concentration 
drops quickly, so you remove the mass, you remove a little bit of mass, and the concentration drops uh, quickly. Say you would remove mass as a result of remediation or as a result of this uh, dissolution process. And uh, when, you, when you remove a little bit of mass, uh, here in this case, say 8 tenths, then you drop the concentration down to 6 tenths of the initial concentration. Um, but then once you've removed, um, say, um, all but 20% of the mass, you, uh, no, sorry, once you've removed, say, 50% of the mass, your uh, concentration is down to 20%, but then, then it, it decreases very slowly after that. So these different fairly complicated behaviors can be described using this quite simple formula. So if you track the amount of mass that remains in the plume, so this is, you're calculating this, you know what that is and you know what that is, and so long as you have this term um, lambda, you can then calculate what the concentration is. Okay, so lambda becomes a uh, calibration parameter that you need to set up the model. That will then be used to characterize the behavior of the source area. Okay, so the source is going to be characterized using this formula and then the plume will be characterized by specifying advection, dispersion, reaction. You can have decay reactions that produce daughter products, so you can, for example, include the decay of PCE to TCE to DCE to vinyl chloride and, and so on. It also allows remediation measures to be included where you remove mass from the source or degrade the plume, etc.